In this video, we will be solving part D and part E of question number 4.3. So let's begin. Your part D says, Ernie says to Bert, Bert, your Marshall rate of substitution is minus 2. That means an extra cookie is worth only twice as much as an extra glass of milk. I offered you to give 3 glasses of milk for every cookie you give me. If I offer you to give more than your Marshall rate of substitution, then you should want to trade with me. Bert replies, Ernie, you are right that my Marshall rate of substitution is minus 2. That means I am willing to make small trades where I get more than 2 glasses of milk for every cookie I give you. But 9 glasses of milk for 3 cookies is too big a trade. My indifference curves are not straight lines, you see. Would Bert be willing to give up one cookie for three glasses of milk? Would Bert object to giving up two cookies for six glasses of milk? Now, before solving this question, there's a very important lesson in this conversation between Bert and Ernie. Note that Bert says, you are right, my marginal rate of substitution is minus two. That means I'm willing to make small trades where I get more than two glasses of milk every cookie I give up. And my indifference curves are not straight lines, you see. In the previous part, we saw that the indifference curve for Bert is in a curve form. As his marginal rate of substitution would vary at different consumption bundles. The value of marginal rate of substitution to be minus 2 was evaluated when Bert was consuming the consumption bundle 4, 6. If he is consuming any different consumption bundle, then at that level of consumption bundle, his marginal rate of substitution might vary and it could be the case that it is different from minus 2. So do keep this thing in mind that your MRS is not constant throughout the indifference curve. It will be constant in only when your indifference curves are straight line, which is the case of your perfect substitute. Else, the, your marginal rate of substitution would be different at different consumption bundle. Now let's come back to the question. Let x1 and x2 be the original consumption bundle, which is your 4,6 in our particular case. That is, he's having 4 cookies and 6 glasses of milk. Now, would Bird be willing to give up 1 cookie? That is, his cookie amount is decreased by 1. For 3 glasses of milk, that would be plus 3 as he's getting 3 more glasses of milk. Hence, his resulting consumption bundle would be 3, 9. Let this new amount of cookie be represented by x1 dash and this be represented by x2 dash. Thus, Bert's new consumption bundle would be x1 dash, comma, x2 dash, which is equal to 3, 9. Now, the question asks us, would Bert be willing to give up one cookie for three glasses of milk? It will depend on his utility level post the trade. That means after the trade, if his utility level increases, then he will accept the trade. If his utility level remains the same, then he will be indifferent between trading and not trading. And if his utility level decreases, then he will reject the trade. So we have to compare the utility before the trade and utility levels after the trade. From previous parts, we know that the utility before the trade which was at the consumption bundle x1 x2 that is where your x1 and x2 takes the value of 4 comma 6 is equal to 72 now let's see what happens to the utility level after the trade that means the utility level at the new consumption bundle which is x1 dash comma x2 dash and here your x1 dash is 3 and x2 dash is 9 so the now we have to calculate the utility at 3 comma 9. We were also given that the utility function takes the form of u of x1 comma x2 is equal to x1 plus 2 multiplied by x2 plus 6. So let's calculate the utility at the consumption bundle 3 comma 9. For that all we have to do is substitute the value of x1 with 3 and x2 with 9 and evaluate the value of this expression. So that would be the utility at the consumption bundle 3 comma 9 is 3 plus 2 as your x1 is 3 multiplied by 9 plus 6 as x2 is 9. So that would be 5 multiplied by 15 which is equal to 75. Now note that before the trade his utility was 72 and after the trade his utility has increased to 75. That means after the trade his utility is increasing. Hence he will be willing to trade. Thus the answer to this particular part is which is 
would bird be willing to give up one cookie for three glasses of milk so your answer is yes as his utility levels are increasing now let's come to the next part which says would bird object to giving up two cookies for six glasses of milk now note that originally he was consuming four cookies and six glasses of milk that would be four and six glasses of milk now the question says he would be giving up two cookies for six glasses of milk so that would this would be plus six as he is getting six glasses of milk as your resultant bundle would be two comma 12 let's call this value would to be x1 star and this to be x2 star hence your new consumption bundle is x1 star and x2 star which is equal to 2 comma 12 again in order to see if the bird would accept the trade or not we have to compare the utility levels before the trade and after the trade as we saw here that the utility level before the trade is 72 as before the trade he was consuming the consumption bundle 4 comma 6 Let's calculate the utility at the new consumption bundle, which is x one star and x two star. That is the utility at the consumption bundle two comma twelve, which would be u of two comma twelve is two plus two multiplied by twelve plus six, which is equal to four multiplied by eighteen, which is equal to seventy two. Now the utility before the trade and after the trade are same. Hence he would be indifferent between trading and not trading. Thus bird would not object to giving up two cookies for six glasses of milk. Because even if he gives up two cookies for six glasses of milk his utility level are remaining the same. They are not making him worse off. If they are not making him better off they are not making him worse off. So he would be fine by making this trade thus he would be indifferent and hence would not object to giving up two cookies for six glasses of milk now let's move on to the next part which says on your graph use red ink to draw a line with slope of minus 3 through the point 4 comma 6 this line shows all of the bundles that bird can achieve by trading cookies for milk or milk for cookies at the rate of one cookie for every three glass of milk Only a segment of this line represents the trade that makes Bird better off than he was without the trade. Label this segment on your graph A B. Now, before drawing any line, we need to find the equation of that line. We are given the slope as minus three, and the line passes through the point four comma six. So, we will be using the point slope form in order to calculate the equation of the line. Where your form looks like this which is y minus y1 is equal to m multiplied by x minus x1 where your m is the slope of the line and y1 is the y coordinate of your point and x1 is the x coordinate of your point in our particular case your slope is minus 3 that means your m becomes minus 3 and the line passes through the point 4 comma 6 that means your point is x1 comma y1 is 4 comma 6 so if i compare Your x one becomes four and y one becomes six. Now, in order to get the equation of the line, all I have to do is just substitute the values of m, x one, and y one into this equation and solve it. So let's do that. That would be y minus six as y one is six is equal to m, which is equal to minus three multiplied by x minus x one, which is four. So that would be y minus six is equal to minus three x. Plus twelve, and rearranging this, this becomes three x plus y is equal to eighteen. This is the equation of your desired line. So let's plot it on the graph. Till now we have drawn this graph where on the x-axis you have number of cookies and on the y-axis you have glasses of milk. Your blue line represents the indifference curve passing through the point four comma six, and black line is nothing but the tangent to the curve at the point four comma six having the slope of minus two. Now let's draw the line three. X plus y is equal to eighteen, which would look like this red line. Now, if you carefully see that there is certain part of this line which is lying above the indifference curve, which is from this point till this point. That means this segment of the line represents the trade that makes Bert better off than he was without the trade. As this segment of the line is lying above the indifference curve, which means it would be giving Bert the higher level of utility as compared to the utility he is getting at the indifference curve so labeling the segment this becomes your this a to b 
Thus, this segment makes boy bird better off by giving him a higher level of utility. So that was all for this question.